Hi, uh, so I'm going to talk today about the new book that we have released and uh, uh, I thought that um, I would record by myself my experience so far uh, from the readers uh, how they have uh, felt about the book. Um, the name of the book is uh, Nanobrain, uh, how to build an uh, artificial brain using time crystal. Uh, so, time crystal is a concept that came in the 1970s. It's a very old concept, and it talks about uh, how to make um, how to make a um, uh, vibrational structure of, um, of a material or or a life form. So first, it came uh, for virus. So now, COVID virus is extremely important, and many people are trying to understand COVID virus and then finding a solution. Mm, though we think that uh, COVID-3 and COVID-4 will be much more dangerous. So humanity must start preparing for COVID-3 and COVID-4. Um, so, so to understand that how virus could, uh, could, could figure out how to make it more um, accessible to the, to the host body or us, we are the host for the virus, so virus needs us to increase their population, and uh, and uh, um, so people try to understand how virus could be so intelligent, and then they came up with an idea that there should be some clock, and then that clock will have a particular phase condition when it will go on and off, just like a switch, and then that kind of single clock would work. But we thought that instead of just thinking one clock, if we have a 3D assembly of clock architecture, then it will be self-operational system by which uh, many, many codes could be implemented by the virus. And then those kind of clock architectures could also work as a sensor. So they will sense periodic information processing in, the, in nature and that they will absorb and then they will implement it. Uh, to understand and then to accommodate. For an example, it enters in my body and it looks into many, many different kind of clocks. And then mm, it's able to figure out that these kind of changes need to be done. So those kind of clocks get edited little by little, little by little, little by little. And then after a few trials, the virus becomes so intelligent that it understands that we have to do that kind of thing. So th the language for virus and language for my body cells must be identical. So we have created a new kind of language called geometric musical language in, in, the, in the first chapter, that is chapter two. You know, chapter one is introduction, chapter two is all about it. And then uh, if you want to build a self-operation, I don't believe in artificial intelligence and I think uh, artificial intelligence uh, is a subject where a human imagines certain ways how a system works and then uh, takes uh, some input and output and then create a blind relationship between input and output and then implement it. It's mostly primarily a uh, list of instructions created by human imagination. Um, it has nothing to do with intelligence. In fact, uh, artificial intelligence or true intelligence was never born. So I think that uh, our book, Nanobrain, um, um, uh, the, the, the making of an artificial brain um, by a time crystal um, published by CRC Press. Um, it's the first book, uh, uh, as far as I know, it's the first book that is honestly addressing the question, what is truly intelligence? And for us, intelligence means um, uh, trying to understand events and the way it is, and then link them together in the most visible way and, uh, and then predict the future. So basically in science, what we do is we look at the events, then by imagination, we link input and output. If we do this, then that will happen. If that, if that relationship, and then we build up a proposition, a, a mathematical protocol or a theory. And then and by repeated experimental verification, uh, that is uh, tested. But we can do a completely different culture. We can, we can think that the whole universe is, um, is made of um, the whole universe is is, um, uh, is made of um, um, uh, geometric shapes uh, and uh, you have a clock and then you have geometric shapes. Same like 1970s concept that um, 
you have a, you have a singularity point here so in the clock you are rotating and then in a particular point when you come then you don't find any uh, any any time so so the phase actually becomes undefined so phase becomes undefined three times you get a triangle four times you get a square and then five times you get a pentagon six times uh, you get a hexagon so we in few geometric shapes we can uh, 1d 2d and 3d geometric shapes we can convert everything that is happening in the universe and then we look only at the nearly periodic events not the absolute periodic events but nearly periodic events and we can convert it into a clock and clock architecture to understand the system another point is that uh, when you when you get all these things um you find the ratio of different sides of the of the triangle and then uh, how many ways you can combine the geometric shapes you are given a triangle and a square and then uh, a pentagon how would you like to put them together for an example you have a triangle and you can put a pentagon on 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 three point of it and you can take a pentagon and then put a triangle on top of it so when you take a triangle and put a pentagon on three points or uh, to take three pentagons so basically it is three into five but when you take five a pentagon and then put uh, five triangles uh, on five of its corners then it's five into three so three into five is not equal to five into three when we look at it topological so that is what the book suggests and then the book suggests that um, you always take the geometric shapes and then you make the combination of how many different combinations of geometric shapes are there and then uh, you put them together okay so 15 so 15 could be 3 into 5 5 into 3 but if uh, but for 12 it could be 2 into 2 into 3 2 into 3 into 2 3 into 2 into 2 so 2 means a, you take a line it has two points you take um, um, 2 into 3 so to put two triangles and then put two lines over there so you can create a uh, create a 12 but many different geometries you can compose for, uh, for 12 to make a uh, to make a make a combination of geometries so when you do that how many ways you can do it? it's called ordered factor metric it is it is it is it, is, it was discovered 200 years back very old concept but if we, we take all possible choices are given okay and then particularly we put uh, we put the number of uh, number of ways you can build a geometric structure and we rotate to them rotate to them why because because there is there is there is not much symmetries in the universe uh, if you look at the varieties of events that could be infinite because there are infinite number of integers but if you if you think um, of uh, of integers i want to explain as many integers as possible with minimum number of primes how many primes you need only 10 to 15 primes because 50% um, uh, of the integers are divided by 2 so you can take if you take 2 that means C2 symmetry of the structures if you cut by me by half and then you can see C2 symmetry. So if you do that, then 50% of the structures are 50% of the of the events you you fathom. Then C3, and then C5, C7. So different kind of forms of symmetries in terms of primes, and then you, you end it up. So we, we rotate the options and then we get a temple like architecture. That is the cover page of the book. So basically, what we do is uh, we understand that uh, we have this kind of number based architecture that architecture is self operational because if it is a temple like architecture and then you and give a lot of geometric shapes it goes to back to the to infinity and then when it goes to the infinity and comes back from infinity uh, uh, a, a certain features because what you do is you adjust the infinite position depending on your composition of geometries. So when it comes back, it returns you a unique thing. For an example, you, in, you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus, five plus 6, dot, 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 up to infinity. You, you tweak the infinite points and what is the return of the summation? Minus 1 by 12. Beautiful mathematics done by Ramanujan. And then that actually is the key for the new kind of fractal tape we are proposing so we are saying the Turing tape will not work. There will be a new kind of tape, and that tape is actually um, stereographically projects geometric shapes to the infinity and brings back from infinity what what is coming. Why does it do so, and why is it so important to make a decision? It is um, it is important because uh, when you when you repeat a set of geometric shapes many many different ways, make a combination, how it repeats and how it will end up at the end. And what are the effective effect in the topological effect uh, when you have infinite series? How it is projected view 
is there at um, with the infinite repetition that we need to understand we need to estimate because then you take into account most of the possibilities for an example when we are saying that only 15 primes you can explain 99.99 percent all 86 percent 87 percent or 90 percent of all possible integers all possible symmetries of the of the of the universe then what we mean is that um, uh, mean is that we we want to take a few but we want to traverse to whole infinity and then uh, get the feedback so projection to infinity and feedback from infinity they are the two key terms of making decisions um, in this system so uh, we created duodecanian algebra why because mm, because you know string theory in string theory what do they do in the string theory um, they have eight dimensional octonian and then four dimensional um, quaternion so what do they do uh, suppose you have a universe and then imaginary universe inside and then imaginary universe inside and then imaginary universe inside if you go eight times you get on octonian and then octonian tensor and then that kind of algebra were there for 200 years nearly 180 years and then you have um, four times if you go inside and inside and inside and inside then you have a quaternion you add them together and then you say that i have understood uh, 12th dimension i think the whole adventure of uh, string theory um, by which they try to understand 12th dimension is totally erroneous uh, we needed a new kind of algebra and that algebra is dodecanian algebra we invented it we published the paper, the paper is in press, it is slowly coming out, but in the book we have a chapter dedicated to it. <laughs> because, because without a Dodecan algebra, without 11 dimension, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot possibly fathom uh, up to infinity. Because you have to project the stereographic geometric shapes, that is the human thoughts or events that are happening around us. We have to take that and project it to infinity and then from infinity you have to get it back. So for, when we try to get back from infinity, we need to we need an access of mathematical tools. So we came up with a new kind of mathematical tools where you only draw circles and all complex problems are solved. So the, in the book we have a tutorial kind of thing where you can you can really take a pencil and a paper and then try to do mathematics without writing equations. Um, and then all these uh, circles or clocks will be there. So one day you can um, check time crystals or the or the, or the phase loops of signals and then you can implement those mathematics naturally you know maybe who knows i'm doing it i'm doing mathematics uh, or the or the information processing right now in my brain using similar kind of uh, cycles and structures so so this is this is um, uh, one part of it and then uh, uh, then comes uh, if if this is so then then how would we uh, uh, I mean, do we see this in proteins and then in, in neurons and then in the brain structures? So we have specifically looked, looked into few proteins, um, tubulin, um, actin, um, and then other kind of proteins, then uh, microtubule and other kind of protofilaments. And then finally, we have looked into neurons. And then finally, um, we, have, uh, we have looked into the whole brain structures. We have simulated the structures, how the brain components vibrate and, and is there primes? So 47 regions in my brain on the top of it, the cortex regions, broadband regions, they do the functionalities. So initially it was 53, that is also a prime. But in the later six regions, they removed there because they are nearly similar. So, so it came down to 47. So 47 apparently is the most distinct region which you can distinguish functionally in the brain. So 47 regions are doing it. So 47 is the largest, largest prime that we are using for the brain model. And we are searching for, for primes everywhere. Um, uh, you can say that we are biased, but we have every right to be biased because we are building the human brain model by ourselves. So we, we, if we are not biased towards it, then who would be? So basically, we look for primes in every single component. For example, microtubule has 13 um, protofilaments, so 12 cavities. So 13 protofilaments, 13 is a prime. 17 cavities are there for hippocampus. And then you know, 37 different kind of um, uh, spiral channels are there in the, in the hippocampus you know, through from which nerve fibers come out and then move everywhere. 43 different kind of um, uh, fibers are there along this particular particular channel of, of connectome, connectome structures. You can see the 43 distinct regions. Uh, so there are primes, 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 primes in every single component of the brain body system. Um, you may say yes, again, I repeat, you may say yes, we are biased. That doesn't matter because we are biased. Uh, 
So, so all these primes, because prime number of cavities are there, prime number of cavities vibrate and it can generate all kinds of integers. So basically, if we, if our brain is following geometric musical language, where geometric shapes are there, whatever you think, whatever you process, whatever the concept you create, I don't care because they will be uh, in the within the 15 geometric sets of the geometric musical language, uh, 14 or 15 different, different kind of primes, ratios of primes. And my brain can vibrate and then can emulate that one, whatever you, you create with 86% to 90% accuracy in my brain. And then it can understand. So, so, so there is no problem. And not only that, it can it can use the, the temple-like architecture, the, the pattern of primes, of symmetries, of different, different choices. You can project it to infinity and feedback, and then, then can comprehend to some extent how it is done. So is it a Turing tip? No, when I'm stereographically projecting to infinity and bringing it back. So, so events are arranged within and above, not side by side. So it's a vertical journey, not horizontal. So this vertical journey was conceptualized by Hindus, Hindu monks, uh, several thousands of years back, and they have been arguing, they have been advocating not to look at the facts. They are advocating to look at the um, confusion or sandeha. So, um, uh, so Maharshi Gautama, um, more than 3000 years back, started uh, documenting it because maybe that is good that was going on in India for thousands of thousands and thousands of years before because that time writing knowledge was prohibited. That's why it was called Sruti. Because if you write it, it becomes a religion, it becomes a faith. It doesn't be, uh, remain a knowledge. It was a beautiful, beautiful concept um, implemented by the Vedic rishis and munis. So uh, so then Sankaracharya came and then uh, Vatsayana and many, many schools of thoughts came. But in India, it was perfectly, accurately, they, they tried to argument it that, uh, that confusion is the way to go. So you take one confusion, you enter inside, you find more confusions. You go inside and you find more confusions and you make the journey continuous until you reach to the fact. Whether, whether in the West, when the science got developed, they look at the fact and then they connect the fact with the Im human imagination. But what Hindu rishis and monks are telling that to solve a problem in the most efficient way, don't look at the fact. Look at the confusion. What is where your mind get multiple different choices with simultaneous equal probability. That's the perfect definition of a confusion. So what, what you do is you get a confusion uh, and then go inside and inside and inside and inside and do that. So we, 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 we created a supramolecular system, synthesized various molecular architectures in our lab to understand whether this architecture of confusion could be created in the system. So that means a singularity point or phase singularity points could be created. We call it brain jelly. And then we found a four circuit element, we call it hinductor. So what happens is you store the charge in a particular pattern and then the device actually projects projects um, a vortex or a or a or a, or a time crystal like architecture, universal time crystal concept that we brought in to to fuse many different kind of clocks or many different kind of time crystals together, and then generate the temple like architecture. So, so this was kind of uh, this uh, the situation. So, so one chapter we have chapter nine we have dedicated in the book only for brain jelly. Chapter 8, we have dedicated only for four circuit element, a very different kind of element where electron doesn't flow. Field creates artificial atoms. So it's a, it's a, it's a totally a, a, an artificial atom or artificial molecule synthesis synthesizer. And, um, and, uh, and basically what we, what we do is we store the charge. It's not that we, we, we don't, but we don't move it. So electronics for the 100, last 100 years, 120 years, it revolutionized mankind, but it was all about moving electron, colliding with electron, with the register, with the collision, so boom, amplification is there. But here it's completely different. How do you arrange the clocks? So making new artificial atom-based structures, so magnetic vortex uh, is primarily our choice. So we stored charge in a different pattern in the system. So that's the kind of a hidden code. And then what you see uh, projecting a like hologram like is the is a magnetic vortex. So that is in chapter eight. And then chapter seven in detail, uh, we have uh, described how um, um, how human brain model could be created purely from time crystal. So so I delete every single hardware, only clock, 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 clock. And then can we do that? How do we do it? Then chapter 10 is a conclusion and then chapter 4 is um, new mechanics because if you have 
um, confusion inside a confusion inside a confusion inside a confusion or singularity inside a singularity inside a singularity inside a singularity then you cannot go with classical mechanics or quantum mechanics you need a dedicated me mechanics so we had to build a dedicated mechanics even for that so a completely new kind of algebra to algebra that is a 12 dimension algebra directly and then um, um, we, we, we had to build universal time crystal a new kind of concept then we had to go inside the neuron and find out filaments and then inside the filaments protein so hierarchy of clocks um, 12 layers of clock architectures we had to do so you had to um, disbelieve uh, the hodgkin huxley paradigm where they say the neuron skin is doing everything uh, nothing filaments are all filaments are silent inside so all these things you know, were there in in in, in chapter six and then uh, um, and then that is the whole thing of the book so in summary, I would like to conclude that uh, if you go through the book, chapter one is the interaction that gives you the philosophical understanding where we are trying to change the way people think about artificial intelligence. Then chapter two is about a new language that we need to understand nature. Chapter three is, is seeing the same, considering prime as God. <laughs> so I'm an atheist, but uh, um, you know, no, no, prime sort of, uh, can replace God and then they create a temple-like architecture and that architecture is the uh, is holding the intelligence of, of a self-operating system then chapter four is about fractal mechanics a new kind of mechanics that you need need and do in algebra a new kind of mathematics we need chapter five is about the past works that we did a series of works uh, over, over the last 15 years we did in our lab to understand to to come to this conclusion how did we learn time crystals and all these things and many switches neural network many many failed attempts whatever there was and then chapter six is all about what are the incredible features of this computing if we can make a decision like this well, how it will change mankind forever chapter seven is all about a new kind of model of the human brain and then chapter eight is about new kind of elementary device the simple decision making device how do you fabricate it what is the fundamental theory of it and um, that's the inductor and then chapter nine is brain jelly how do you make it different different things like uh, fractal reaction kinetics new kind of chemical kinetics that we invented and patented and then um, um, uh, programmable matter how do you make it and then chapter 10 is all about uh, future that uh, if consciousness increases if you propose a model uh, this is the way to build an artificial brain or a conscious machine then you must be able what would be the next step and next step and next step so that kind of uh, table we have created how do you ev evolution of consciousness would happen and that's the end and the final figure of the book thank you very much for listening to me and then um, i hope that uh, you have liked it and if you have any questions do let me know i would love to tell uh, more about uh, our our journey and adventure